So did you have multiple mirrors? Yes. You had like five mirrors. Yes. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> So this, oh, cool. was, this was the early uh, testing. Hey Internet, Tell Stewart here. So I got to do something really cool. I got to go into where the piano guys make their videos and talk to one of the behind the scenes piano guys, Chase Scott. He's the editor, executive producer, and he does a really good job. I wanted to learn more about what went into the making of their latest video, Hello. So just a heads up, this video is a little long. It's about 16 minutes long. Um, I think it's really interesting. We talk a lot about the technical things, a, a lot of what Shay did to make the video as awesome as he did. Okay, there's there's Shay, he's pretending to, to work. <laughs> this is Kyle, he does their behind the scenes. Social media. Social media. Yeah. And over here, just real quick, this is Addison. Website, graphics, awesomeness. So, like, I mean, what what were the main challenges in this whole thing? Um, filming with mirrors, as you know, filming with mirrors it creates a kind of a hindrance where you place the camera or a lot of rotoscoping to get it out. So, sure. So there was a little little both involved with it, but uh, having mirrors that uh, reflect him in the right way that we wanted, while also getting a good shot. This was definitely a challenge, so I got a bunch of these and kind of placed uh, the... <laughs> I love the smiley face, yeah. that's awesome. Place them where we want it, so we get just to see exactly where he's going to reflect in each mirror. Yeah. And then uh, just experiment, experiment with different angles and different looks to kind of see what uh, would reflect the coolest uh, angles for what sections of the song and how sure. to sequence it. So there's two parts of the song. He had the La Cromosa, which we wanted to focus on that individually that was going to be separate from it. Um, Hello. Yeah. And give it kind of a different vibe and different feel, something a little bit more moody and, and, and classic. Adele, we wanted to use the mirrors as the infusion of how you're hearing all the different sounds that are coming from from that song. He had a hundred cello tracks that obviously we couldn't feature them all. Sure. You want to get the feeling of uh, uh, creating a full sound as visually that uh, we could reproduce through using mirrors. And you know, typically in the past, and as you know, I've been multiplying of Steve, so I thought kind of like a different twist and a different way of doing it would be to uh, use mirrors as a reflection. So initially it starts out where he's playing exactly what you see him playing. Yeah. But you know, it really is him in that sense. And then as the song progresses, then we took Steve's from different shots and then actually you know, just rotoscope those in. Okay. So, so you're getting the full now orchestration. But we wanted it to kind of build up to that. So kind of initially start with just seeing the multiplying of him and his reflection, and all of a sudden you see that separation as they start to play different parts, and then it's a little bit more weird and tricky. Right. And, and uh, as it goes along. So you basically, you had that shot, you had that set up, and you did this. You shot, you did it about five or six times, right? And that's yeah. how you got the different... Yeah, so we, we took a sequence by sequence. So we, we focused first on um, the, this, this kind of like the foundational shot, where mm -hmm. we keep coming back to the shot. But as the video progresses, it, it would change. So yeah, we did multiple takes, him playing different parts. You know, of course, did a couple, I think, with each take, just for redundancy to have options to pick from. Right. And then uh, kind of placed them together and then with it being 4K, we're able to kind of scale it in and kind of add some movement to kind of give you some yeah. more of a dolly uh, feeling to it. And so you were actually moving, so you had the shot and you, everything, any movement was actually in in, in post? Um, in, in this particular sequence, yes. That okay. All done by, all the, by the in post, yes. All the camera, the handheld look. Uh-huh. Oh, I yeah, can. We'll zoom with some handheld sure. plugins. Love it. What am I seeing? Um, okay. Is it like the, the edges? Like, what's the source of light here? I'm yes. wondering what that so, was. So, um, we used uh, sheets that we actually just taped onto the back of the mirrors that we had a light uh, shining through to diffuse oh. the light. So you had the the wall, but then you just put yeah. sheets in between. Yeah. So initially, huh. that wasn't the plan. It was to use the lights. But yeah. Then, like, our concern, of course, is how that light would look on camera and right. just hit the lens. So to diffuse the light, we gave it that look, we used a sheet. To... Uh, one thing I'm going to be talk talking about in this uh, in a future video is how to deconstruct uh, 
Like when you see something and you want to learn how they did it, there's a way that you can actually look at the video and deconstruct that. And I'm going to be talking about that more. But this one was really tricky because mirrors are extremely disorienting. And so I couldn't figure out what the heck I was looking at. And so um, that's cool that those are, those are just sheets that are behind there. Yeah, so that the, the payoff, of course, is you know being there. We recognize exactly how every scene is created. So, yeah. So to us, the illusion isn't as prominent to someone who's watching it for the first time. So, right. So of course, the payoff for this is when people are confused by like how how's that yeah. effect being created when when it, you know the reveal of it, of course, is it's a lot more um, simple. It's just sure. learning how to move angles and create angles that uh, kind of create an illusion that uh, go beyond what you're seeing. And it was well done. Great illusion, it was really cool. A lot of people have been asking about the bow. I mean, it is legitimately a bow that has light in it, right? Yeah, so it's a LED light that's, uh, we actually have fabricated just for this shoot. And we've huh. had lots of people asking us about it. And so in the same sequence, we also changed the light. We used a white light because we like them both. And, and the plan oh, was that, okay. you know, in the edit, edit, edit I was thinking of having that be during the chorus and right. during the verses, use the blue light just to mm -hmm. create some separation so it didn't feel like the same thing. You know? Sure. And I'm sure you did a lot of uh, post uh, coloring as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used the plug and call film convert to give it more of a, a filmish look to it, kind of crush the blacks a little bit to, yeah. to keep the set looking, you know, as we intended it to look. And cool. So move forward a little bit. Let's go ahead and play forward. Okay, so this is an interesting shot. They're frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so once again, it's so not, what, the camera's not moving. So the camera's not moving, so, but you've given the illusion that it's actually moving. Yeah, so they're doing a slow pan out with a little bit of a, a handheld look to it. And yeah. then, uh, what I essentially did is did a rotoscope around Steve in the middle and then had the two outside Steve's as a freeze frame. Yeah. But I froze them at the part where I wanted them to come in. Right. So, so it came in perfectly. As, That's cool. As it did. So. That's really cool. And this is actually one of the most shocking shots for me. I don't know if anyone noticed that. Is this the first time Steve's ever stood up? <laughs> that was like, a weird, it was weird to me a little bit. Not in a yeah. bad way, but it was like, I noticed it. I was like, well, I've never, I can't remember Steve ever standing um, up. Yeah, so I think we talked about him doing it quite a bit. And this this was the first time he stood up in a video. So, you know, huh. yeah, this, this is Steve and Chef Nelson 2.0. Yeah, Steve and Nelson 2.0. He's, He's standing now. He doesn't chairs anymore. What are we going to see next? This one is trippy to me. We're, again, we're looking at mirrors. And mirrors are so disorienting, but what am I looking at? Yeah, so the, one of the challenges of this video, of course, is another month. I could just kept trying to spend more time doing creative shots, but this was just one sequence where I wanted, from that point on, where you had that break in the music, I tried different things with each shot. So, yeah. so this particular shot um, was essentially a rotoscope taking each section of the mirrors and then moving them, tracking them how I want them to go, and then uh, kind of giving you a, a, a trippy funhouse feel to it where you're not quite sure what's moving. And yeah, so you, 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 the shot was normal otherwise? Yeah, this is a normal shot. As you see, there's three of them playing right there. Just focus on each section of him and then uh, by rotoscoping him, I was able to take those sections and then zoom in on them individually. There you go. This is what the oh. rock clip looked like. Whoa, look at that. That's what it looked like, huh? Yeah, so Holy cow. You can see that there was, we had the fog right here. We had uh, above it, we had huh. the ceiling. And so when we initially set this up, we didn't think about what was gonna bounce off in that. Yeah. So then of course this was an all lighter shoot that didn't think it was gonna be, but of course it turned out that way. Yeah, always. Where we put uh, the black tarp on the mirrors behind it because we had extra mirrors to kind of create the and darkened it. Yeah. And then I wrote a scope out the edges of the top and then using the, the anamorphic look I wanted, the extreme anamorphic look. I, yeah, I didn't notice you do, you're actually bouncing the anamorphic around in different sizes. Yeah, I did. So the, those sections I intentionally did a I mean, you'd still see it. I still had a lot of rotoscoping, cleaning up, and use of light. Yeah. Above, like these blue, like the blue light, and then each area had something to kind of make it look like the light was kind of diffusing or... Um, yeah. Kind of Go back to the other shot. I mean, it really looks so different. I mean, the, the reflections and stuff like that, I mean, 
Yeah. Unless it's just a different lighting scheme from Let's that. See. Let's go like this. Take this shot. And there's this shot. Really the same shot? Um, not entirely. I should grab one more. It's a blue light. Let me do that real quick. Oh, no, that's the one. Okay, so, cool. Because they're two different light. Yeah. So, but still, I mean, you can see those surroundings. It's yeah, it's quite a bit different. <laughs> that's amazing. That I mean, this is what's what's cool about being a cinematographer is you, as you're filming it, you have to see stuff and kind of think, okay, well, I'm gonna we're gonna garbage this part and garbage this part and you, and and kind of have faith that yeah, you're gonna have everything. Yeah, and it always turns out different, of course. And yeah. So you work around it and make some changes and hope that it works in the end, so. Yeah. All right, so this shot, you're actually truly moving. Yes. Yeah, so and that, that was, that's him playing. Yeah, it sounds like a light cam shot panning out. Yeah. And, uh, this funnel uh, sequence obviously creates that multiple Steve you got going on right there. And then from there on, this is kind of the first scene where you see it's kind of more just kind of natural light with some color grading. And then after this point on, Notice that there's oh, some type of light going on in every single one of the shots. But, yeah, so this this is something where we had yeah, this fog. What happened is we filmed him without him being in the shots and I mean living through the fog. But yeah. the problem was when we because we did the rotoscope, it didn't match anymore. Because oh. you had the fog and him there. So sure. what ended up actually being kind of a cool effect is it looks like the mirrors the fog is trapped in the mirror. Oh. Which was yeah. really here, <laughs> right? But then I put a light source and post here and here, so it kind of looks like they're coming through through those angles. Wow, that's cool. So this one's trippy. He's upside down. Yeah, there's not much to it other than he's upside down. He just so you did just two moves forward. No, and I tried to match them. No, I just took the two sides and oh, uh, just so you rotate them upside down and then you flip them. So then ah. you know, back to the, doing the right perspective. Here I'm, I'm complicating it in my head. Yeah. And then <laughs> we just add the lights. Oh, I love that shot. Okay, go back to that. That was just a really cool shot. I just remember like doing this. Like we, we had a mirrors in our yeah. bathroom and. Before I got that deal. Yeah. <laughs> we had the, with the triangular mirrors in, my, in our bathroom. I used to close them like that. Yeah. The triangle shape and this is essentially what that is. And. Uh, and I guess you have a flashlight and I turn it on in there and you just sure. go for infinity. So we were kind of knowing that, it was just, you know, how, how do you create that? And right. So this is the first time this shot's been reduced. Yeah. It's just, it's oh, so now you can actually really see, I didn't even notice now, you can see the sheets. Yeah. You can, yeah okay, right there, you can see the sheets. Yeah. No, no, I'm looking at it. I'm wondering, just because I know I know Paul and I know you, I know you and, and, and it seems very artistic and I'm wondering if this actually be, well, between um, just the guys, it was, it was this you know, a unanimous yeah, thing? Yeah, I think, I think uh, everyone, my first feeling, I didn't know if it was good or not. Everyone thought it fit the video, so I cool. think the video is, because it's so, it took such a, um, maybe a, a creative approach to it, it kind of left more leeway for yeah, things like that. So. It was fun, like, like editing with, uh, you know, on a team like this, was, there's, you, when you're doing really artistic things, sometimes you you know drawing the line going too far, or something like that it sometimes can be tricky. And, and we've had great, <laughs> great times when uh, there's something artistic we want to throw out, and, and uh, it, it kind of doesn't. You just gotta work together. You have to work together. Get to know each other's style. And when you, yeah, so. that's important. That's the point of draft one. How many takes did you do? You think? Um, total? Yeah. Let's see, we did. Um, I guess I guess a note for people: a take in, in, in a music video is usually not always, but usually from playing the music from start to finish. So at one take could be about four minutes if the music, if the song is about four minutes long. One hundred and six. One hundred and six. And it doesn't seem like all those are going to be full takes. No. But that's that's one hundred and six times they stopped and start the camera, had to had to push play on their iPhone. They they're. Uh, they're probably playing the music from their iPhone, going to a loudspeaker, and um, yeah. The, and this one actually, the reason why it's so many is because we took it section by section. Right. The reason why is it's difficult for Steve in this case, where he's got so many different parts he's playing. Right. To, to have to go through and try to remember exactly how it, how it was, and um, in, in the multi-cam made it one, one giant uh, sequence. Cool. 
and we're going to be covering that more in depth later. But yeah, the 100, 100 plus different uh, different items to sync. And it, yeah, syncing by hand, that's going to be a nightmare. There are automatic ways to do it, and we're going to talk about manual and automatic syncing and stuff like that. So it's going to be cool. Um, so subscribe to my channel for those feature videos. The cameras don't really uh, like turn around and face face these guys much, and, and uh, it, sh it should more. And my goal is to go behind the scenes of not just the piano guys, but other companies, and talk to people who who are really creative and, and you know have the creative input in this whole thing. If you, if you want more of this kind of stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe to this. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.